Good morning to you candidates. Uh, today I am going to talk to you on two very important entries as far as the armed forces are concerned. Uh, this is the NDA entry and the TES entry uh, which is only for the army. Now a large number of candidates are opting for these entries but I want to tell you that the SSBs view the candidates coming for the uh, these entries are little in a little different way and how is what I'm going to explain to you. Now, NDA remains the prime entry or the primary entry for the armed forces, the most popular entry and uh, most of the service chiefs are from the N NDA entry. In fact, I don't remember any who has been a non-NDA officer and has gone on to become the service chief. So therefore, it remains the prime or the most important entry for the armed forces. Now, once you enter NDA and this now it includes the girls also. So you do three years of training at uh, Khadakwasla and thereafter one year of training at the specialized uh, services training academies and then go on to become a commissioned officer. Right? So uh, NDA inculcates high level of physical fitness, mental alertness, your uh, professional knowledge and really makes a soldier out of you in the period in which you undergo the training. Now with we I like to compare the TS entry with this. Now the main difference between these two entries is that TES does not have a UPSC exam. Whereas NDA candidates have to clear the written UPSC exam. There is no UPSC exam for the TS entry. So therefore what happens is that a very large number of candidates apply for the TS entry thinking it to be a free for all entry. Because the QR is very simple, it's just 60% in uh, physics, chemistry, maths in the 12th and uh, today with today's marks it is not difficult to score 60% and you should have appeared for the JE exam. So what happens is when the you get a call up date at the SSB, a very large number of candidates report for the entry. Now SSBs are designed only to handle a certain number of candidates per batch. That's based on the number of assessors available and the administrative facilities which are there. Now if for let us say a batch which NDA or the SSB can handle 40 candidates, uh, 200 candidates or 300 candidates land up. So there is a very high probability of most of them getting screened out on the first job and the, which may include some good candidates also. So therefore as far as the SSPs are concerned, this is a non-UPAC entry and maybe a backdoor entry. So therefore the candidate has to be that much better prepared when he enters for the TS, so gives his name for the TS entry. Because if he is not well prepared, the ch high chances of getting screened out on the first day only. So therefore, your performance in the screening has to be good. You have to do well in your OI testing. Write a good story in PPDT. And thereafter, contribute meaningfully to the discussion to come to a common group story. In case you are able to do this, then you will be screened. So now when the candidates come to the SSB for this entry and they are generally found to lack any knowledge of that. Why I am saying this is because 
they did not have to put in the hard work of clearing a UPSC written exam. So they treated more like a picnic that we will go and we will appear just directly for the SSB and we may get recommended. Now even the basic issues are not known to the candidates. That is what will be my duration of training? How will I and in what time frame will I become an officer? From where will I get an engineering degree? Where are the various training academies located which train the students for B.Tech? Where is the basic military training carried out? Most of the candidates appearing for TAs have no idea of this basic issues. They come unprepared, underprepared and therefore even if they have cleared the screening, there is a high chance of them appearing to be disinterested candidates and getting uh, or, or getting unsuccessful in the SSP. Right? So it is very important for candidates going for the TS to do their research. You must understand that you do one year basic military training at OTA Gaya. Thereafter you go to the various specialist institute that is the CME Pune the MCME Sikandrabad and the MCT at Mau for different types of engineering training. After three years of this training, that is after total four years of work, the officers are commissioned as lieutenants and one more year of training is done post the commission. Now I can tell you that very very few candidates are aware of all this when they go for the SSB. And therefore, if they are not aware, there is a high chance that candidates are not going to clear the SSB because they will not look motivated enough. So when you have applied for a particular entry, it is extremely important to find out about that entry, do your research and then go well prepared. So you should have a genuine interest in engineering. Okay, it should not appear to be a candidate just who has come because there is no UPSC exam. You should not be a candidate who has come because he is not able to pass NDA. Okay, now majority of people are those who are given two attempts, three attempts at NDA, cannot pass, then they say, okay, let's go for TA. All those things are likely to be held against you. So, to close, I would like to say that if you decide to go for the TA entry, please do your research and go well prepared so that you are Firstly screened in and thereafter cleared by the SSB and then go on to uh, do your officer's role in the regiment. And let me tell you that from my experience, those candidates who have been recommended through TES entry have gone on to do extremely well in the armed force. And today there is a clamor in many units to post them with TES officers. So, it's a very good entry, but provided you do the correct homework. So I hope this will be a lesson for those of you who are aspiring to join the armed forces through this TS entry. Thank you very much.